To you and I, father was always, well, our father. But to Richard, he was something more, like a hero. Sometimes being a responsible leader means having to make the hard decisions. Look, it's the hats! No doubt about it, their efforts saved the island of Sodor. Perhaps you will inherit this railway, but you have a long way to go. And while you're waiting, consider this. Your name means nothing. Sir, you're, you're going to retire? Yes, Thomas. Yes, I am. Who will take his place? Who indeed? Before you say it, Thomas, it's not, not your fault. fault. I haven't decided yet. Thomas, believe me, I know what it's like to lose someone you care about. Everything you're feeling right now, I've felt it too. I've been there. The anger, the helplessness, the guilt. But Thomas, you could not have prevented what happened. Don't tell yourself that. Don't go down that path. I've seen what that mentality can do, and it never ends well. For your own sake, Thomas, please. And with that settled, I believe that concludes our final meeting together. Members of the board, I would like nothing more than to express my gratitude to each and every one of you for your many years of good service with me. Just one moment, Sir Stephen. There is one more item we wish to address. Of course, Miss Carlin. What did you have in mind? Well, Sir Stephen, it concerns the matter of your position once you are gone. It has been a month since you announced your retirement, and yet you have still failed to nominate a successor. Indeed. It is important that we consider your nominee carefully. You have not given us much time to do that. Fear not, Mr. Starr. You can expect me to make an announcement tomorrow at the ceremony. That brings us to our other concern. We just want to make sure you choose someone who is qualified. We would not want the railway to fall into the hands of someone who is not ready for the job. Sir Baldwin, I can assure you that I understand the gravity of this matter perfectly. I can also assure you that my decision will be a carefully considered one. All the same, we thought it wise to remind you of the contingency. That is, what happens if you make a choice that the board does not approve? I'm fully aware of the board's power to pass the hat to a successor of its own choosing. Besides, after so many years, I have faith that you have all come to trust my judgment. Very well, Sir Stephen. I believe this meeting is now concluded. Sir Stephen. Mr. Ardman. I was hoping I might have a word. Well, I suppose you've already had several. What is it? I wanted to clarify some of the board's comments from the meeting today. Is that so? It seems to me the board has made their position very clear. Hardly. The other board members have made a habit of beating around the bush. Me, I like to get straight to the point. The board knows you're going to nominate one of your three children to be your successor, but they already plan not to approve two of those three possibilities. Ah, you know this for a fact. I know because I agree with the other members. Despite your fondness for them, neither Charles nor Emily is qualified for the job. Some of us are even hesitant to consider Richard as a possibility. He has a bad track record of emotional instability, and this makes him unpredictable. Ultimately, what this railway needs is someone who is not only experienced, but is committed to their principles and to ensuring the future of the railway. At all costs. Hmm. Let me guess. You're thinking of yourself. Why not? Forgive me for saying so, Sir Stephen, but I believe I have more experience than any of your children. I started as a station master's clerk at Marin when I was 16 and worked my way up to be the vice president of finance today. I know this railway inside and out. Indeed. It seems you know everything there is to know about this railway. Or rather, everything that you can learn from behind the desk. Where is your real-world experience? 
What knowledge do you have of the synergy among all parts of this railway? Have you ever even met one of our engines? Engines are just machines, Sir Stephen. Whatever sentiment you may have for them, it isn't going to make them operate more efficiently. And efficiency is one of those principles to which I am fully committed. Even if that includes dieselization? Of course! Diesels are synonymous with efficiency. I will never understand your prejudice against them. That is because you fail to comprehend what this railway stands for, what it has always stood for, and it is why you will never be the fat controller. The board disagrees. It's already settled. If your nominee is not approved, I am the contingency candidate. Still, if you were to nominate me from the beginning, if I were to have your sanction, it would save the board a lot of unnecessary trouble. I would hate for there to be any conflict between us. Of course I don't want there to be conflict, which is why I trust the board to make the right decision. Huh. Indeed. You're only prolonging the inevitable, Sir Stephen. The House of Hat cannot reign forever. Soon, the name of the Fat Controller will not be Sir Topham Hat, but rather Sir Philip Ardman. Excuse me, sir, but there's been an incident at the transfer yard. Hmm. Now I must take care of that. Take me there at once. Well, I still say it's fairly obvious. Of course it's going to be Richard. Like I said, it's in his name. Richard Topham Hat. He was always destined to be our fat controller one day. Besides, he's already got the experience from running the Scarlowy line. Just because his middle name is Topham doesn't make him the most qualified. Didn't you hear? Last year he almost had Scarlowy sent away. I say he's already bought his directorship. Well, who do you think is the better candidate, then? Don't tell me, Charles. He's a realtor. He doesn't even work for the railway. Well, maybe that's a good thing. I think this railway could use an outside perspective for a change. Besides, Charles is definitely more level-headed than Richard. Well, if we're choosing based on level-headedness, I must put in my vote for Emily. She's probably the most all-around competent of the three. Well, of course you vote for Emily. You were named for her, after all. Speaking of which, I'll note that Richard is the only hat child not to have an engine named after him. I think that's a clear indication that the whole railway was meant to go to him anyway. And besides, he's still the only one of the three with railway experience. Not so fast, Gordon. Remember the big storm last summer? It was Emily and Charles who coordinated getting everyone to safety from Tedmouth Tower. They've already demonstrated their ability to deal with railway crises, in my opinion. And Richard has caused more railway problems than I think he's solved. The only thing I'll say against Emily is that I'm not sure she'd leave her job as a therapist to come be the fat controller. It doesn't seem to fit her personality. I'm not so sure the job is going to go to a hat at all. I hear tell that the railway board's nominating their own candidate, some assistant manager named Ardman. I don't know very much about him, so I can't say if he's qualified. But the board seems to like him enough that I think there's a good chance he'll get the job. But the Fat Controller title has stayed within the Hat family for generations. Surely they wouldn't take it away now. This board's a rotten crowd. I'm not sure the Fat Controller is going to have much choice. Tell you what, since we all have different opinions on this matter, I'll make you a wager. If Richard gets the job, you all have to take turns shunting my coaches for the rest of the month. But if one of your candidates gets the job, I'll let that engine pull the express for a week. Done. You're on, Gordon. The express is as good as mine. I love a good wager. Count me in. Excellent. We shall reconvene after the ceremony tomorrow. I'll see you all then. Speaking of which, isn't there supposed to be some kind of parade tomorrow? There is. As a matter of fact, the fat controller asked me to lead the parade. I'll be sporting Sodor colors. Good thing I didn't mention that to Gordon just now. He would have had a fit over not being asked. Richard, what on earth happened here? I'll tell you what happened. Mac pushed me. Push you? What slander? You pulled me. All the weight of the train is on your side. This is your fault. You're the one who was supposed to break. It's your fault. Oh dear. I wish you two would stop arguing so much. 
Lighten explained, sir. Everything was normal in the yard. A good train was due to arrive any minute. Suddenly the workmen got word that the train was out of control. Richard saw the scrap and rubbish by the side of the track. He ordered the men to put it on the line to stop the train. It did stop Mighty Mac, but he came off the rails in the process. And the rest? Well, that's what you see before you. Hmm, I see. Thank you, Duncan. Rich, I heard the commotion. Is everything alright? Everything's fine. A nasty accident has just been averted. Hmm. You have a very peculiar definition of averted, Richard. What's that supposed to mean? I stopped him from hitting Duncan, didn't I? Well, I think that could have easily been done by simply switching him into the siding. Well, I... Uh... Oh. And even if it had been necessary to derail the train, you should have done it before the points. Look at this mess. Now both Duncan and Peter Sam are trapped in their sidings. Oh, come on now. You've got to give the poor fellow some credit. He acted quickly in a dangerous situation. I think that all in all, this could have been much worse. Well, I never. Captain Monroe, it's been quite a long time since I've seen you. Indeed. Pardon me for saying so, sir, but I think you're failing to give credit where credit is due. Your son has become a fine man and a fine railway manager. I think in this scenario, he demonstrated his leadership. With all due respect, Captain, I will decide what true railway leadership means. You did your best with the accident, Richard. Now do better with the cleanup. Hish, all this sourness is bad for my swords. It's all right, Rich. I'm sure your father will come round. He's seen what you're capable of. <sighs> I don't know, Oscar. I just don't know. Well, this is still entirely your fault. Oi! Let's just agree that it's both your fault. Then you two can stow it. Hm. Young engines. Remember, do not remove the mask. It is imperative that you are not caught. Understood. Your attempt at sabotage in Boko did not produce the desired results. Pray you do not fail me again. The job will be done. If it isn't, the inside of that mask will be the last thing you ever see. Why? Mr. Percival, are you quite sure? The request is from the Prime Minister himself, Your Grace. I am quite sure. Well, in that case, Mr. Percival, I can't thank you enough. I will see you then, I suppose. Ah, Duke, you're just in time. This fine gentleman is an MP. I've just been invited to speak at Parliament about the Norumbi Initiative in a few months. Ah, well, that is exciting news, Your Grace. That's quite the engine you have there, Mr. Norumby. Ah, yes. Every Duke of Sodor is gifted with an engine. I was only a child when I inherited this engine from my father, but I was unaware of his existence. Our friend Duke here had been locked in his shed on the Mid-Sodor Railway since it closed down. It was years before he was finally found by some clergymen and returned home. You know, I've always liked railways. I've had a peculiar fascination with engines ever since I was a child. I even considered working for a railway at one time. Well, the Skarloey Railway is still looking for a new manager. I know you have your job as a public official, but should the occasion ever arise? Thank you, Mr. Norumby, but I'm afraid that after everything my brother did as Thin Controller, I want nothing to do with that position, or my brother's legacy in any way. As you wish. Good day then, Mr. Percival. Good day, Your Grace. I'll see you in Parliament. <sighs> oh dear. I feel that Mr. Percival would be a perfect replacement for his brother, Yet he wants nothing to do with it. Rather a shame, really. Your Grace, may I have a word with you? Of course, Duke, anything. It's about the initiative. There are a number of things I... Well, that I don't like about it. 
That's too, Duke. I should think that you, of all engines, should support the Normby Initiative. Don't you miss the time when railways were king and roads were not needed? You've always been one to support a return to the old days. What's changed now? With respect, Your Grace, the world has changed. The society that we've built today cannot function without roads. I'm as much a fan of railways as anyone, but it would be imprudent to deny the synergy that must exist between road and rail. For years I slept in a shed and the world rolled on without me. It made me realize that perhaps it isn't people that change the world, it is the world which uses people to change itself. I'm sorry, Duke, but I'm afraid I must disagree with you. Railways can operate independent of roads, and people can change the world. You speak of synergy, and that is exactly what I am so close to achieving, not between road and rail, but between cities, nations, and continents. Once upon a time, railways were the glue which held the world together. Then people retreated into their cars and their motorcycles and their personal lives and stopped caring about each other. In a railway, there is harmony, there is cooperation. On roads, there is only a mad scramble for personal gain, for speed, for a place on the highway. <sighs> Sir, you speak only in metaphors. You fail to think about the cost, about how detrimental a move like this could be on the world's economy. For Godred's sake, Duke, it's not about money. It was never about money. It's about sending a message to the world that even in these fractured and chaotic times, all peoples can be whole again, that we can do better, that next time... <sighs> I'm sorry, Duke, but I have business to attend to. And whether you like it or not, I'm going to continue pursuing peace. I doubt I will see peace in your future. Morning, Brooke. Oh, good morning, Emily. I wasn't expecting to see you until the ceremony tomorrow. I just came by to drop this off. I think Abigail left it when she came over the other day. Oh yes, this is hers. Abby can be so careless with her things sometimes. Well, kids will be kids. I left a toy on the express when I was a kid. Granddad had them scour the coaches for it. Didn't find it for two weeks. Yes, I've heard that story. It's as you say, kids will be kids. I've never regretted having one, though. There's such a joy in your life. I'm glad she makes you happy. I don't think kids are in the cards for me, though. I consider myself married to my work. What about directorship of the Northwestern Railway? Is that in the cards? It's as I said. I consider myself married to my work. Sometimes it seems like Charles is, too. He's not home very much. He really is hoping his father gives him the job, though. A directorship, I mean. Meanwhile, I almost pray that he doesn't. If what your parents have told me is true, being a director is draining. And as for not being home very much, if Charles was the director of a railway, it would make his absences now seem like... like... well child's play. I wouldn't worry too much, Brooke. Charles always puts his family first. I've got to get back to work. Take care of that bear. So long, Emily. I'll see you tomorrow. Abby, come down here. Auntie Emily found Mr. Matthew. Master Noromi, there is a man here who wishes to speak to you. <sighs> who is it, Reginald? A Baron Kruger, your grace. He says it's important. Very well. Send him in. Very good, sir. One moment. Ah, Mr. Noromi, Baron Kruger. I've been meaning to speak to you for some time. Indeed? How may I be of service? Well, Sir Robert, it concerns the matter of your Normby initiative. I must say, I do not support it. Hmm. 
I should hardly think you went to the trouble of meeting in person just to tell me that you don't want me to pursue my initiative. Plenty of people have done that by phone and email. Oh, on the contrary, Mr. Norrenby. I do want you to continue pursuing the initiative. That way it will be all the more satisfying when it fails spectacularly. I think, Mr. Kruger, that you underestimate the amount of support that I have received, not only from the public, but from railways all across the globe. I underestimate nothing. You, however, have made a grave overestimation of the Northwestern Railway's abilities to meet your standards. The Northwestern will fail you, and subsequently, the initiative. And I can't help but notice that you have so far failed to tell me why you are really here. Hmm, this is a fine instrument. I adore classical music. The years go by, yet its beauty never fades. After hundreds of years, it is still so vivid, so powerful, so haunting. I came here for two reasons. The first was to warn you of your imminent failure, and the other was to look you in the eye and tell you how very much I'm going to enjoy watching you destroy yourself. Your Grace, is everything all right? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Reginald. Uh, that Baron fellow is a very odd man. No, I simply can't understand why he came all this way just to... Sir? It cannot be.